we're going to switch gears a little bit and have BC students present different invasive and endangered species to kind of limelight some local species that are causing problems or are endangered. So our first one is Preston Mitchell. He's going to present a lion bush. Good afternoon. Uh, my purpose today is to inform you of uh, Troyes Bolitan, the invasive lionfish. Uh, in order to better understand this invasive species, we'll look at uh, the characteristics of the lionfish, its native habitat, how it was introduced, why it's such a problem, and then uh, methods of management. Uh, the lionfish is a highly venomous fish. Uh, it's very aggressive and it has one of the fastest strikes in the, in the marine environment. It has a lifespan of up to 15 years, and it's easily identified by its red, red color with white vertical stripes. Uh, it feeds on small fishes, shrimps, and crustaceans, and crabs, and uh, it's important to note that not all the spines on this fish are venomous. Only the dorsal fins, the pelvic fins, and then the anal fins right here. Uh, now that we've talked a little bit about the characteristics, I'd like to talk about the native habitat. Uh, the lionfish is uh, native to the Indo-Pacific Oceans, but it does have a far range, uh, anywhere from West Africa to Eastern Australia, and as far north as uh, uh, South Korea. Uh, now that we've talked about the native habitat, I'd like to talk a little bit about how they're introduced. Even though it's, uh, it's highly disputed, the exact origin, DNA evidence has confirmed that there are multiple origins, uh, mainly being around Florida. Uh, two theories exist. Some, some debate that they believe they were uh, unwanted aquarium uh, inhabitants, that they either got too big for their aquariums or too aggressive, so the owners uh, intentionally released them uh, into, the, into the salt water. Scientists believe that during Hurricane Andrew, some aquariums were broken and that the, the lionfish escaped to the sea. Uh, interesting enough, there were eyewitness accounts a man came forward during this hurricane after he went back to his house and he had had a male with uh, five female lionfish and they were gone and then it so happened that his neighbor actually saw the lionfish swimming. So uh, even though that is one confirmed origin, like I said again, researchers have confirmed that it's, it's multiple. Uh, the only common factor being that these fish didn't swim over here by themselves, that it's a uh, irresponsibility on humans' parts releasing them and uh, not properly taking care of them. Now that we've talked about how they're introduced, I'd like, like to talk a little bit about why it's such a threat. Uh, the lionfish is a very hardy fish. It's very aggressive, not towards humans, but it has a stomach that can expand at 30 times its normal size. Uh, the lionfish, is because it's alien to the native fish here, they don't recognize it as a threat, so it's able to expand its dorsal fins and it kind of glides in within reach and then it's real, got a real quite, uh, quick strike. It's, uh, it was timed at three one hundredths of a second. Uh, this, it's, even though even though it's venomous, and a lot of people think about the lionfish, the first thing they think is it's venomous, and that's just scary in general. But that's not really the scariest thing about this fish. Like uh, a lot of the other people have talked about, uh, your survival is all based on your reproductive rate and, and how well you're able to reproduce. And the scariest thing about this fish is its extremely high reproduction rate. Uh, not only that, but the lionfish eats other fish which are economically and economically important to us. They eat little fish that uh, clean the coral reefs from the fertilizer and the runoff that we've had. Uh, the, the only little fish that are able to kind of maintain those coral reefs and these lionfish are, are just devastating. They're, they're taking them all out, uh, killing reefs or all, all, across, all across their region. And uh, like it says, they, they, they will collapse ecosystems. Uh, I'd like to go in a little bit further about the reproduction rate since it is one of the, one of the scariest things about this uh, invasive species. The females can produce up to 30,000 eggs every four days. Uh, they reproduce year-round, no natural predators uh, in these waters and their, their ideal temperature, so they're able to have good, good success with reproduction. And then like it says, uh, the larvae hatch and then Due to the currents, they're able to disperse quickly, so that no predators are able to get to those eggs and uh, and have success at eating them. Uh, these numbers right here, I just kind of out of my own curiosity, I wanted to come up with some numbers. 
So I just kind of did the 100% survival rate, the best case scenario that the fish lives its full lifespans and reproduces at max reproduction the whole time. And then I kind of wanted to get a, a, you know, an intermediate figure there. And then I, I wanted to get something real low, something we could, we could kind of consider, uh, you know, uh, best case scenario for us. And so I kind of came up with this. Uh, the scary thing about this is this is only one lionfish. In, in its whole lifetime. So if you, if you get into thinking about each one that reproduces and when those fish are able to reproduce, you see how these numbers can really get out of hand. Now that we've talked about why the lionfish is such a threat, I'd like to talk about the current methods of management. We're actually fortunate enough to have uh, uh, organizations like Reef. Reef is, is, is the main contributor to trying to curb this lionfish uh, invasion. Uh, they started campaigns, they started workshops, uh, NOAA has also started uh, Eat Lionfish campaigns and they've come up with lionfish cookbooks and they found that this meat is actually, it's really good meat can, when you consider all the other, the fish that we eat and uh, the markets that are out there. They found that lionfish are actually very good eating. It's just the, the danger is in handling them. If they can get people to comfortably handle them and then uh, and take care of them and be responsible, then, then they want to try to create a market. Uh, researchers in the Caribbean have uh, started introducing wild reef sharks and taking the lionfish and introducing those as a food source, hoping that through doing that, that uh, they'll somehow create a natural predator for this lionfish and something to at least can contain or can try to control the uh, outbreak. Uh, of course, when divers go out, anytime they, they go out, they, if they see them, they often remove the lionfish uh, immediately. Uh, in the Yucatan, Yucatan Peninsula, it's, it's uh, it's, I was amazed to find out that while they've outlawed most spear fishing because of overfishing, they've actually lifted the ban for lionfish. And there's companies down there that have started packaging the lionfish and importing it and shipping it. And you know, most of us know that if you create a market for it and you promote overfishing and don't regulate it, that this could maybe be your best solution for the problem. Now that we've talked about the current, oh, sorry. Now that, <laughs> I've hoped I left you with a better understanding of this invasive lionfish by talking about the characteristics, the native habitat, how it was introduced, why it's such a threat, and the methods of management. And with that, I'd like to give credit to the following sources, and a special thanks to Dr. Bell, Professor Hyatt, uh, Zeke Dearham, Victoria College, and Phi Theta Kappa. And with that, I'd like to open it up for any questions. <laughs> In their native habitat, parasites mostly. Uh, parasites, there are. Uh, I was looking at this this morning because, you know, that was kind of the only thing I had gotten was, was parasites, and I, I kind of wanted to look into that further. But from what I understand, even over here, they're now introducing grouper, and grouper are actually eating these, adults are, uh, are eating these lionfish. But over there, the, the main thing is the, season, the seasons, and then also uh, natural parasites. But so far over here, the parasites here either haven't recognized it or they're, they're trying to, they're trying to, this is kind of new with the lionfish, so they're still breaking ground on the research, but for the most part in their native land, it's, it's parasites. So we're going to be able to buy yes, this in the, in the grocery store then? Uh, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully for a little while until they, until they, get, until they get it under control. Uh, I was going to put some pictures on here, but they've come up with some, some really gourmet plates, uh, you know, and, um, and everyone that's tried it, they've done things where they've prepared it and let people try it, and people have compared it to, uh, you know, being some of the best fish they've ever eaten. Uh, just the venom thing kind of shies people away from it, but uh, without people knowing, they've agreed that it's some probably the better fish they've ever had. Okay, I'm off the hook. <laughs>